and we're live. Hi, everybody out there in um, remote learning land. Hello, teachers. Hello, principals. Hello, kids, uh, students. And today we have me, Jerry Pilata. We have Mike Artel in New Orleans. Say hi, Mike. Hey, hi, Mike. We have Mike Shoulders in Clarksville, Tennessee. There's Mike. He's jealous of my tie today, so he I think he wore a bow tie. And then uh, hello to Steve up in Vermont, Steve Swinburne. Hi, guys. Steve, Here. The four of us are, are children's book authors that run into each other out on the road, visiting schools all over the country. And we decided to do a couple of shows. And then we said, hey, why don't we do another show, talk about facts, you know? So... Today, we thought we'd have an ocean theme. Last week, we had a butterfly theme. So uh, should I start off with the first fact? What do you think? Sure. By yep. the way, for those, you guys can show your books too. There's, there's a book, Ocean County. Ocean County. Here's a book, Sea Mammal Alphabet. Here's one, Underwater County. Center that, here's Jerry. Center it. Underwater, underwater Alphabet. Underwater Alphabet. Boat Alphabet. Does boats count? Absolutely. And Atlantic Ocean Alpha, Ocean Alphabet. Wow. So I did write wow. a bunch of ocean books. We thought we'd have an ocean theme. I know the other guys, they can show you their books. And uh, I thought my first interesting fact today would be why does, well, most sharks have white bottoms, the white on the bottom. Great white shark, it's gray on top, white underneath. Flounders, they're gray on top, white underneath. Why are fish white underneath? And I know the answer, but I'll show you what I mean with one of the fish right here. I lost my place. So, oh yeah, look at this. Here is an illustration of mackerels. Mackerels. And um, if you look, they're blue and dark blue on top. So if you're in the water in a boat and you look down in the water, they're very hard to see because the, their back is blue. Oh. But if you look, if you were scuba diving, if you're scuba diving, for those of you that scuba, have scuba dove, and you look up at the surface of the ocean, it's white. And I don't know why that is, I forget. I think it has to do with the rays of the sun bouncing off the surface of the water. So um, if you look, so from underneath, if you look up, if you're scuba diving and you look up at a mackerel, it's white, its belly is white, and the surface of the water is white. So he's doubly camouflaged. He cam he's camouflaged on both sides of his body. So there you go. Think back for the day. Mike Scholes, did you know that? I did not know. Yeah, my belly's white. <laughs> I, I, I've been swimming, and people look from under you look. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. I think uh, my this is, I don't know if that's mirrored or not, guys. It's, it's great. Uh, you can draw creatures of the ocean yes, and say, and uh, that, that our brains, human brains, most of our brain, because we're very visual creatures, and in fact, um, even think in pictures. And, and just to prove that to you, if I ask you, to, uh, you don't think E L E P H A N T, you think of, so we think in pictures. And Shark, Harry, do you know where it's, what it's taken up with? Probably smell. It is smell. They have incredible senses of smell. So, I thought of that. Yeah. Most of a shark's brain is dedicated to the sense of smell. So um, I just thought that was a kind of a fun fact too. Uh, it kind of surprised me. So that's it. That's all I got for that, that particular round. That's a great one. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think uh, Steve Swin. I, in my book called um, Safe, Warm and Snug, how parents learned about a fish. Most fish, most fish leave their eggs in the water. And this is a very different kind of a fish. This fish is called a cichlid. And the poem goes like this. Fish fry, swimming tight. Watch out, catfish bite. Mama cichlid opens wide. The baby fish are safe inside. So here's a fish that keeps not only her eggs, but her babies in her mouth. They are found, cichlids are found in tropical countries around the world, and they're called a mouth brooder. 
Can you all say that? Mouth brooder. Yeah, good job. Mouth hey, bro Steve, brooder. Bring it closer. Can you bring it closer? Yeah. Is that better? Yes, yes. So that fish will keep its eggs and its young in its mouth until they're old enough to be on their own. But if a predator comes near like a catfish, she will open her mouth and all you probably there's some great videos online where you have a cichlid with all the babies going right into the mouth being protected so it's a really super cool way to protect your babies so oh. that's my fact today from my book called safe warm and snug nice nice well done Beautiful. hey steve steve who's the publisher of that book uh, the publisher for this book is Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. It's been out uh, since 19. This is actually one of my oldest books. Let me, let me get a date on this. This is still in print, believe it or not. And you guys may have met this wonderful group of 1999. Anybody ever meet Jose Arruego and Arian Dewey? I've They're, met Jose. He's deceased, though. He is deceased. Oh, no. I met him once oh, at a school. I didn't know that. Huh. We met him one. I met him once in, in my school. career. He used to be really. He used to go to schools all over yeah, the place. He sure did. Every yeah. school yeah. I went to, they used to say Jose was here last year. You know? Yeah, I met him once. I was so happy to meet him, but he passed soon after that. Um, but apparently, Jose, he and his wife—they're not—they were divorced. But he and his wife, Ariane Dewey, used to work together on books. Jose would draw the black lines and Ariane would paint in the color. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. I can't cool. imagine working as a team, but they worked as a team on these books. Wow. Beautiful cut. Very nice. Did I hurt your feelings, Steve? Should I have said beautiful book? Uh, yeah, you could have said that, sure. <laughs> beautiful book, beautiful cover. My Jose shoulders. Hey, uh, I think that the writing was beautiful in that book myself. I think that was uh, the strongest part of that book. Thank you. But the reason I asked you is uh, when I wanted to be an author and I did not have any books, I, I wrote a weekly column and companies sent me their books to mention in my column. I did not review books as much as recommend. Steve, <laughs> I recommended that book. Oh, I thank remember you. that. I remember that very strongly and I would show it, I would show it at teacher workshops and share it with teachers. So that's why I asked that question. Thank you. So Mike. Uh, I have a book uh, by Sleeping Bear Press from Sleeping Bear Press uh, called T is for Titanic, a, tit a Titanic alphabet. And it's uh, my wife and I co-wrote it and it's illustrated by Heisbert von Frankenhusen. Wait a minute. Uh, what? What? Franken, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Hey. Wow. Uh, I, wonder how long it, I wonder how long it took that child to learn how to spell his name. How long was he in first grade? Yeah, right. So I did not, of course, I did not pick him to, to illustrate or, or get to, uh, to talk to him about the illustrations. But when Mike. I met him. Hey, Mike, didn't he illustrate legend of sleeping bear yes yes he lives in michigan he's a he's a very prolific illustrator fantastic work look at that cover so so uh anyway the first thing i asked him when i met him was how do you say your name his name begins with a g but it's pronounced with an h sound he is from uh the netherlands i believe the netherlands and he moved to america at, in his teens so here's my fact that i want to share Here's a fact that I want to share from my book is that when the Titanic was crossing the ocean, the water where it sank was 28 degrees. Oh my God. 28. And the reason that it did not freeze is because of the salt, the minerals in it, and the motion in the ocean. So it is actually colder. So on this page of the book, uh, L is for life boats and life belts. I love what he did with that. Look how ominous the ship looks in the background with the dark. Put it and close, the Mike. Put it close. Say again? Close, close. 
Closer? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Can you read the uh, what's on, on that page, Mike? Well, I can paraphrase it. I can paraphrase it, uh, Steve. Uh, that, that we're talking about how you, you could only live for a couple of minutes in that water. Really? It was eight degrees. So most people were dying from the cold, hypothermia. <laughs> Very few. Maybe a couple of people died from drowning. That is wow. not how they died. It was wow. so. Now, if you're ever in Tennessee, if you're ever in East Tennessee in the mountains, or if you're ever in Branson, there's a Titanic Museum in each location. They have a vat of water that they keep at 28 degrees. And you are invited to put your hand in for as long as you can stand it. Trust me, 10 seconds is enough. Wow. So when I did the research, I went to those two museums, uh, one in Branson and then one in uh, Pigeon Forge and did research. So it, uh, this page talks about the lifeboats and it talks about how they were diminished from 64 down to 32, down to 16. And that was to leave more room on the deck. So that's why this, uh, this page is important. So my, my amazing fact is that the water was colder than ice. It was 28 degrees. Wow. So the reason, wow. uh, if we go back to the movie, the Titanic movie, uh, who were the main characters? Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio? Right. Yeah. He was on the raft. She was out of the water, but he was in the water. So he's freezing his tail off, but she survived because she was out of the water. I, I'm, right. I'm, that had everything to do with that, yes, because he was in the water. Um, I, I, I don't have the fact, but I did read during the research that few of them drowned. Wow. That was mostly uh, shock, uh, uh, I guess heart attacks maybe even. Yeah. You know hypothermia or something, but but uh, the water was unbelievably cold. I could not believe what 28 degrees of water uh, felt like when I was doing research for the book. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. 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 Yep. Sorry, guys, my hair is almost in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so um, thanks for bringing this down, Mike. We appreciate it. That's it. <laughs> Tell one with hair. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about the ocean, right? And ocean creatures. So um, why would I show my fresh water book? Fresh water. They because they swim. Because a salmon lives in the ocean, but then he swims back upstream in fresh water, into fresh water, and lays his eggs in fresh water, usually in the stream, exact stream where he was born. It's like one of the marvels of nature. So here's a fish, a salmon. I think that's a coho right there. So they, they live five years in the ocean and then they come back and they lay their eggs in fresh water. So did can you I, guys know? Can I interrupt you for one minute? Yeah. Right outside this house, this window, we have a, a, a river called the West River where they stock it with salmon. Those salmon swim from here my, near my house all the way to the Long Island Sound and out into the Atlantic Ocean, and they come back. So you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a remarkable journey. So well, here's I, my I, I, don't, I don't associate salmon with Vermont. That's, uh, I know. that's amazing, yeah. Yeah. It's like when I, when I was uh, on my bicycle in Idaho, I was 700 miles from the Pacific, and they said that the salmon swam all the way up there. Oh my water. gosh, really? But anyways, so do you know, I, I'm asking, I'm putting it out to you guys. Do you know a fish that does the opposite? It lives in fresh water and then it goes out in the ocean to have its babies. Hmm. How do you like that? Ale wife. What? Is it an, Amer an American eel. Oh. Ah, yeah. really? An American eel. So it lives in fresh water, but it goes out to the ocean. So this fish was a big mystery to everybody. Nobody could really figure out how, how it created baby eels. They never wow. could figure it out. And finally wow. someone figured it out. They go out to the ocean and they Very breed well, out wow. in the ocean. And then they, they come back and they live 
they live in I, fresh water. I guess rivers. I guess the eggs just kind of float. Uh, uh, creatures that lay their eggs in the ocean. I'm not I mean, sure. Yeah. I, I do remember that there's a word for that when you live in salt water and breed in fresh water, or mm. when you live in fresh water and breed in salt water. Yeah. But I can't remember the words right now. So I didn't put them in the book because I think my editor took it out. Okay. All right, Artel, you're up next. Michael All right. Artel. All New right. Orleans. Now it's time now for share my screen. Woohoo. And this is a um this is a new book that I'm uh, just about finished with. It's a joke book, as you can tell. And um, I'm going to, uh, let's see, stop sharing that. Uh, get this guy out of the way, okay? And, okay, and then I'm going to share a different screen because these are all ocean jokes. Are you guys ready for some ocean jokes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why is it hard to win any kind of game in the ocean? Because the score is what, guys? Uh, oh, we died. Died. Ah, 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 ah. What is the best kind of fish to catch, oh, best kind of can to catch fish in? A pelican. Can. Of course it is. Uh, which whale is the saddest? The blue, the blue, blue whale. whale. Yes. Did you illustrate and write this? Yes, I did. Nice. What happens to electric eels after an earthquake? All right, ah. Ah. all right, Corte. You guys have to do the answers. I'll do the setup. You do the. You knock them down. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What kind of food does coral like? Refried beans. There you go. All right. Uh, let's see. These are bad, huh? Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh wait, that was a good one. What sea has the softest sea floor? The muddy, muddy terrain. Muddy terrain, guys. And ah. who brings who brings presents to all the good little crustaceans on Christmas Eve? Sandy Claus. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 please stop, Mr. Mike. All right, this is the best one. Right here. Here's a knock knock joke. Knock knock, knock knock, knock knock, knock knock. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> all right. All right. So that's it. All right. That's my. That's all I got for that one. Now somebody else is up. Now thanks, Steve or Mike. It's Steve. Yeah. That was great. Oh, all right, I'm gonna that reminds me. That reminds me of a Lester Laminac story. Oh. How can you tell a first grader is knocking at your door? And the answer is. Because no one's ever tell them when to stop. They just keep <laughs> knocking and knocking and knocking. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm going to attempt to share screen here. And I'm going to bring us right to the ocean. Here we go. And oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Got to do that. Share. And let's see if this works. Can you all see it? Yes. Yeah. All right, here we are in uh, the coast of New Hampshire. Oh, here we come. I was going to guess it was Maine, but New Hampshire, yeah. The ocean is filled with huge drifting clouds of microscopic plants and animals called plankton. Plankton. I look at this stuff, I can't see a critter in there, but there are thousands of them in there. Twice a day, the tides rise and wash over the rocky shore with a fresh plankton soup. Barnacles, crabs, mussels, and other filter feeders hungrily snatch and strain plankton from the seawater. The incoming tide is so incredibly rich that a drop of ocean contains thousands of plankton. So the sad Very thing cool. about that Very is, cool, Steve. Thank you. The sad thing about that, if um, <laughs> it, it's a little bit of a sad... Um, after fact, is that there are some places in the ocean where scientists are saying that there's more plastic than plankton, which is unbelievable. I've got one more for you if I can. And this is um, this is called Ocean Soup Tide Pool Poems. And hey, Steve, he, so, Steve, do you have one where an orca throws you up in the air? Like I've that's seen that. on my Okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh! 
one type of soup is really good. It makes a delicious <laughs> snack. But be careful when you take a bite. The soup might bite your back. Crabs, pinch, and urchins poke. Soup that bites is no joke. joke. Just through a way plastic. I live in this room close, close to the sea where the view is great and the food is free. Some of the tans come and go. Some I eat if they're too slow. One end of me is firmly locked. The other end gently rocks. I live in this room close to the sea. Oh, oh what a life for an enemy. Wow. Thank you, guys. And thanks for getting dressed up to it. That was nice. Oh, yeah. No problem. I know. <laughs> okay, Mike Shoulders. I got nothing. I don't, <laughs> I don't have books about the ocean. So uh, what I want to do is share a, an unusual fact about the Titanic. Sort of, uh, I guess everything about this is sort of about the ocean. But uh, one of the most interesting facts, do, do I or you three know why the Titanic's official initials were RMS, Titanic. Oh, uh, Royal Mess. Majesty's ship. Yeah. Two are wrong so far. Do you want to be the third one wrong, Mike Artel? Um, no. I'll okay. Just... Well, most people think okay. that Rothschild and Mackenzie. Um, Close. That's what I think. No, wait, 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 I got it. Really might sink. <laughs> Close. Very, no. Seriously, it was called the RMS Titanic. Most people are like Jerry. They think it's the Royal Majesty ship because I think there were lots of those. It was actually, its official title was Royal Mail Steamship. Wow. It was Royal built Mail? Royal Mail, Mail Steamship. Now, wow. here. Here's a fabulous fact. <clears throat> fabulous. Fabulous. Nearly 7 million pieces of mail. Why? Seven. What million? happened? What do you mean, what happened? It sank. Oh, oh my oh, On the maiden voyage, there were 7 million pieces of mail? On the Titanic, oh, when it no. sank were seven million pieces. It was a sh it was a postal ship. That's what it was. Huh. That's where most wow. of the money came from. It was the Royal uh, Royal Mail Steamship. And was any of the mail recovered? No. Not no. none of the mail survived. Not that I know of. Wow. And I, I have to say this. Uh, I have not watched Titanic. The movie? Probably, you haven't seen the movie? No, I've seen bits and pieces of it. It's too long. My, I can't concentrate that long. So, but in one scene that was on when I walked through the living room one time, there was a bag of mail floating past Jack as he was going down the hallway. Ah. Uh. That I think that was a wink and a nod to that fact that yes, we know there was mail on here. You know, but that's not what this is about. Yeah. Seven million okay. pieces of mail. Yeah, we have some chat chat here. We have some chat, and it says, Nancy Reedy says, hi, I've invited my intermediate language class to attend. I hope they can view this event. Thank you, intermediate class, for watching us. If you have any questions, please text us. And then it says, um, yeah, someone else says, does anyone have any questions for us? And uh, it says, Mike, can you share a fact about a river event? Well, we'll do that on the next, your Mike next round. Yeah. Susan Who from Colorado says, Mike, can you share a fact about a river event? That's Susan Hutchins. Yeah. 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 So, all right, you ready for my next fact? Am I next? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, here is a fish with blue teeth so you could see the illustration up close that's a harlequin tusk fish and you could see one in a pet store it's it's expensive oh to buy it's a tropical ocean fish
from the coral reef are harlequin tusk fish, and it has bright blue teeth. So, do you know what a you know what you guys can go look it up. You know what a, a scientist told me? They're trying to isolate the gene in the DNA of the fish that makes the teeth blue because they think they could get that gene and inject it in a human. And then Mike Cartel, instead of having white teeth, you could have blue teeth. If we inject the fish DNA into hey. your, I, I'd inject it directly into your brain, but that, that would That would enhance my chances of getting, uh, getting with the blue man group, which is my dream. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking pretty blue down there as it is there, Artel. So Mike, Mike uh, I mean, Steve Swinburne, did you know that this fish had blue teeth? No, that's really a great fact. That but Jim, did you cool. say why, how did, it, how did it get those blue teeth? I don't know. Do I win uh, tooth fact of the month? You do. You do. Yeah. No well, competition. Good. Nobody's even close, Jerry. All right. All right, Mike, you're next. All right, I thought it might be fun to do a little drawing. So any of you kids who have paper and pencil with you, let's do a little drawing. Normally I would use uh, another drawing program, but Zoom provides us with uh, a whiteboard. So we're going to use the whiteboard. It's a little, not quite as easy to draw on this as a regular program that I use, but this will work. So Jerry was talking about, and about sharks. Thought it might be fun to do a shark. Like this, do this like that. And then kids, don't make the mistake a lot of kids make when they do the tail of fish. A lot of times kids, even kids who could draw pretty well, they do this, they make straight lines. Don't do that. Instead, it's much more like a, like a crescent moon. Oh See yeah. That? It's much more like a crescent moon. That's great. Okay, now kids, See, any of you kids uh, know what you call the, the, the fin on top? I bet some of you do. Fin on top. It's called the what, Steve? Uh, fin on top. No, Dorsal. ask the guy from Tennessee. Ask the guy from Tennessee. Mike, what is that fin on top called? The what fin? Uh, the dorsal. It is. Way to go, Mike. And then there's usually, there's different configurations of fins, but usually there's one there too. And dorsal. There is a fin on the side. Anybody know what that's called? I know. Jerry. Pectoral fin. It certainly is. Let me uh, change the color here just so I can, you want to erase, there's a little spot here. Oh, well. Yeah, you want to get rid of that line, don't you? Yeah, yeah you do, right here. That, oh, you see, but if I do Whoa. that, it erases, it erases it all. So that's okay. Um, this line needs to be erased. If I was better at um, drawing with this program, I would I would do that. Let's see. Let me try. It this. looks great. Oh, there we go. There you go. Yeah. So you want to erase that line. That's okay. nice. Now let's get back. And you can probably see the other pectoral fin on the other side, like that a little bit. And then there are gill slits on the side. Now, most sharks have five. Some, that's actually not. Let's make those a little more vertical. Most sharks have five, some have seven. I'm just gonna put five like that, okay? And then you can put the hey, eyes. Mike. Yeah. My, in my new book, there's a six gill shark and a seven gill shark. There is, I didn't know there was a six gill. I knew there was seven. Oh. Wow, yeah. all right. That's good fact right there. And, so and Mike, do you I, wonder why they have to keep sharks, if they stop swimming, they die? Tell us. Uh, they've got to get that, that water through those gills to generate oxygen for their blood. So that's what's happening there. They're constantly on the move. And if they stop swimming, they die. So here's a, here's a fish that just keeps swimming for, the, for its entire life. Wow. Well, look guys, um, you, you can also, I should mention um, let's see, a straw and let's just change it to white. If you wanna make it funnier, like sometimes kids just wanna draw for fun, can always put the eyes on top of the head like that <laughs> like that okay and then instead of making each individual tooth like this because sharks have multiple rows of teeth it's kind of more fun if you do like that and like that and then like jerry said i i can't shade with this tool but you want to shade this top part 
and leave the bottom part lighter. And kids, if you're using a pencil, you could just take your finger and you can rub, rub this and smudge it with your finger. If you're using a pencil, it doesn't work with markers or pens, of course, but you can smudge it with your fingers like that. And then, then of course you can, if you're doing a cartoon, you always want to think funny. So. Okay, like that. That's great. All right, so there's a base, your basic generic white shark, okay. All right, guys, I'm done. Don't erase. Oh. I was gonna tell you not to erase that. Oh, why? Can you get it back? Uh, maybe, let's see. Okay, let's see, stop sharing that. Let me share again, share the screen. Let's go back to the whiteboard, share. Let's see if it erases everything or, ah, there you go. All right, save that for when I talk next because I want to, my next fact has to do with the tail. Oh, okay. Let me just uh, make sure I, I say that too. All right. That's an original. I wonder if that's worth something. Yeah, yeah. It's worth a lot, Steve. <laughs> that's, that's my wife. wife. That's my wife. wife. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like like they used to say, with that in a quarter, you can make a phone call. You know. <laughs> okay, who's up? Swimming. Swimming. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back. If you, we're going to stick to the ocean theme, I'm going to take us back, if we can, back into the ocean. I made some kind of funny videos with this book a few years ago called Ocean Soup Tide Pool Poems, and there's a really cool animal called a sea slug. And um, it's, a, it's actually a shellless gastropod. So here we, go. here we go with a little video uh, of, of uh, Harry Dar. So you ready for this one, guys? This is my favorite. Oh, Steve, I thought you had gotten some help about that. <laughs> sure, here we go. <laughs> Shellless gastropod. You can call me sea slug if gastropod sounds odd. Don't you think I'm gorgeous on the seaweed leaves I scrape, scraping bits of food to eat? A slug has got to watch its shape. Count yourself quite lucky, for without a pesky shell, you see my lovely body. I'm a sea slug type of bell. I'm Michelle is gastropod. You can call me sea slug if gastropod sounds on. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, wow. Mike Shoulders, Mike Shoulders in Tennessee is in shock. Uh, <laughs> I cannot believe. That that. Absolutely. Mike, no, Steve, um, Mike's, I Mike's believe what I just saw. Mike's worried because he thinks he dated her in college. I got to ask you guys one question because we're on an ocean theme. When was the I last have to be time honest. you put on a dress and you stepped into the tide pool and you did a poem? Wow. I have so, to be wow. honest. When I first saw that, what, about two years ago, I was, I was on your website. I didn't even know it was you. <laughs> it looks just like my sister. I did. Honest to God. I was, I was totally faked out. I didn't know it was you. Well, I got that. I got that wig and that dress um, in a Salvation Army supply store. Yeah, and we filmed some other that stuff on the too. coast of New Hampshire. It was a lot of fun. We did a lot of videos. That was those are a lot of fun. And you can go on my website <clears throat> and uh, find those if you want. All right, Mike Ref Schultz is up. I, Mike I, no, is there any way to unsee that? Can I wash that <laughs> out? of my eyes. Woo! I'll, call the, I'll call the men in black. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Get a flash. Look right here. Get the Look flash right here. <laughs> wow. Sorry. Uh, this has nothing to do with anything other than I know Susan is a great supporter of ours, Susan Hutchins in Colorado. Well, some of her students sent me something and because of the quarantine and all, I've kind of left this unopened and one of the good things about being an author 
is that we get fan mail or thank you cards. And so I'm just going to open up one and just show one real quick. This is from Will, it looks like. Wow. I've seen this at all. Thank you, Mr. Mike, for answering our questions. Thanks. Woo! Nice. So I don't That's know fun. if Will is looking. Oh, here's one more from Colton. Dear Mr. Mike, thank you for calling us and answering our questions. And that's from Will. So I'm going to look at the rest of these. They were unopened until just now. And so I'll look at them later. Good. Now, Susan asked me to talk about an interesting fact. Jerry shared one about freshwater fish going into salt water and salt water fish going into fresh water. What she was talking about was my novel set on the Mississippi River. So uh, this is the novel Crossing the Deadline set during the Civil War. Uh, Steve, you, you've heard me talk about this before, maybe in, in our video last time. Yeah. America's worst ship disaster, uh, arguably, because a lot of people push back on this, uh, but I believe National Geographic says that uh, more people died than on the Titanic uh, around 1800. It is believed, and I'll say this phrase, up to 1800 died one ship that exploded at Memphis, Tennessee, uh, exploded and it was called the Sultana. So for all the students that are watching, Google Sultana Memphis explosion, and you can read about it. The soldiers were going home after the Civil War and it exploded just after it uh, unloaded some sugar and some people in Memphis. The Chicago Opera Troupe had just gotten off the ship. So all of their lives were saved because they had just gotten off to do a concert in Memphis after the Civil War. And it was uh, really horrific. Oh, man. So wow. do you all want me to mention this now or at the very end about the book giveaway? Why don't you do it now as, as an enticement? Yeah. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. And then maybe next Friday, uh, someone else will step up from the group. But anybody who's watching this video, if you will leave a comment on the YouTube uh, channel or on the YouTube video, leave a comment or a question. And, uh, and if you, you'll, whatever your username is, uh, next Friday, I'll do a random name drawer and a random person will receive an autographed copy of T is for Titanic, a Titanic alphabet. And I'll mail it, include postage, and it'll come right to your door. And all you have to do is uh, leave a comment on the, uh, on the video, and we'll draw a random name next week for a free book mailed right to your house. So tell your friends and your neighbors. So there you go. Back to you, Jerry. Live in our studio. Right, thank you, guys. I want to know if any of you three know what this creature is. I was at the beach in California and I saw this creature on a rock. And this creature is also in the Atlantic Ocean at the beach I grew up at. And I want to know if you guys can tell me what it is. There it is right there. Okay. And if you look, the, the characteristic of this creature is that it has eight shells. So the ones in Massachusetts have eight shells. The ones in California have eight shells. The ones in Australia have eight shells. This creature, there's one of them right there. I'll show you another one. That like one is- Is a limpet? Ready? Uh, no, I don't believe it's a limpet, no. Yeah, there's another one. This one has sort of a furry, but see the eight shells? So how do you is like that, that? Is that like a prehistoric animal? No, he's around now. I mean, I mean, has it lived for millions of years? It, like yeah, the it's, like, uh, it's like a troglodyte or something. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a prehistoric are word. You like talking that. about my cartel, millions of years old. Uh, are, you, <laughs> are you talking about my cartel? No. Yes. What, I, I believe it's a chiton. C H I T O N. Oh, I'm not even close. I'm not I, even close. Then. <laughs> A limpet, I'm pretty sure, uh, for some reason, I'm blanking out on it. I'll show you a limpet. Ready? Um, there's a limpet. It looks like a, a hat. There. There's a limpet. It's oh, round right. and like a mountain. 
So yeah. there's a muscle and there's a limpet. And then yeah. I was trying to get all in one picture, all four types of uh, creatures. I don't know if I pulled it off. Let me see if I did. Yeah, I did. If you look on this picture right here, there's a barnacle. You know, you look, people walk by rocks and they never really notice what's there. But look what's right there. There's a mussel, a barnacle, a limpet, and a chitin all in one little spot on a rock. Wow. That's okay. Awesome. Where was that, Jerry? It was in uh, it was in Malibu, California. You see any famous actors? Um, I'm trying to think if I saw anyone famous. Yeah, you know who I saw at dinner? I saw the guy from Back to the Future. I forget his name. Michael J. Fox. No, the old the guy oh, with the fuzzy. Oh, oh Doc. Yeah. Doc. Yeah. Yes. He was walking down the street as I was going in for dinner. All right, wow. here we go. Uh, th there's something in the chat room. It says, um, uh, it's, uh, I don't I know answered, if I could. I answered the one they asked me. So, uh, but there's one for, for you, Jerry. Reason, it says for Jerry. Um, oh, they were responding to your they question. They were saying it was a crab. Someone said it was a crab. Someone else said it was a turtle. No, it's a chitin, C-H-I-T-O-N. So go look it up, C-H-I-T-O-N. And you can also, another creature attached to the rocks, limpet, L-I-M-P-E-T. So there's two creatures that people don't really know that well, but they're very common, okay? Uh, Jerry, how do, they, how do they attach? I mean, is it, it's not suction like a remora, is it? It's, it's like a glue or something, isn't it? No, well, they can move, they do move occasionally. Um, it, you can you can push them off, but it's more like a, a like an abalone or grabbing a, a snail or an abalone. It's sort of, I guess, wow. suction would be a good word. Uh, someone else read the next one. It says, uh, "Still curious about how Mike Artel gets his joke ideas." Oh, but for yeah. some reason, I can't read the rest of it. It's it's it's. Um, it's okay. She was just asking me how, how I get my joke ideas. And I just explained that I start with word play, you know, like, <clears throat> like, uh, the word bamboo has the word boo in it. So that makes me wonder how I could tie in boo to a joke and bamboo is a grass, right? So the riddle is, I mean, the joke is what is the scariest kind of grass? Bamboo. bamboo. See, most people think writing jokes and, and riddles and things like that you start with a really funny question. That's not it. It's much more like playing Jeopardy. You already have the answer. The answer is bamboo. Okay, so how do I write a joke about bamboo? I always thought bamboo is a tree. You're saying it's a grass. It's a grass. Wow, yeah, I never grass. knew that. Yeah, and, and so, uh, and I'm just using that as an example, but you know, uh, so you look at boo and you, see, you look, see if you can find something in the word. And so you say boo, okay, boo is kind of like Halloween or scary or, and then grass, and so you put them together. So, um, you know, are um, words that sound like, you know, like California, you might say cow, California, cow, and something with a cow. Or, so you have to kind of, you kind of have to take the word and, and twist it a little bit. And, but you start with, you start with the answer, like Jeopardy. Right, you're playing with words, that's great. Right, yeah, so, yeah. That's how I do it. I mean, other people do it differently. So one of these times we'll do, we'll do a thing like what one of these times I'll show you how, how to write uh, tongue twisters. I got a little formula for writing tongue twisters and uh, you could write millions of them. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for one more. Does anybody want to go one more round? I had one more fact I wanted to. Let me tell. do a quick one. Let me do, cause this will all, just take a second. Uh, this is this is a very old book I did in the 90s called Weatherwise, and uh, I just wanted everybody to see. Uh, this is about hurricanes, which of course start in the ocean, usually off the coast of Africa, and um, the the wind comes off that desert, the Sahara Desert, and it goes out and begins to spin because of the Earth's rotation, and that that's when it hits uh, uh, the United States uh, or, or Central America. But I just wanted to show you this because this was a little technique that I used when I illustrated this. This is a drawing I did. And the way I did it was I took pencil, uh, graphite actually, and I, I, I covered the entire sheet of paper. 
with that. With that. And, and then I took an eraser and then erased, erased the hurricane from there. And the very, very white spots are uh, correction fluid, boo-boo juice. You know? So it's kind of like Floyd Cooper does with his, <laughs> but uh, uh, not yeah. anywhere near the quality Floyd does. But it's, it's um, you know, so I just wanted, it's kind of like, you know, a sculptor, when a sculptor creates a piece of art, a sculptor doesn't add anything uh, to a block of marble. Uh, he creates art, he or she creates art by taking away. So sometimes yeah. the, most, the most creative thing you can do is not add more words or more pictures or more detail. Sometimes the most creative thing you can do is take away, edit in yeah. essence. So that's all, that's all I got. Great. Well, that's something Great. the illustrators taught me when I started doing my books. Mm -hmm. They they would say less is more, less is more. And at Very first, true. I didn't know what they were talking about, but they kept yeah. saying less is more. Like the less you show, the more your imagination sees better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So sure. yeah, and I think the writer also needs to tell the story in their words, so the illustrator has the freedom to interpret those words and tell their own story. Because a, a picture book is a collaboration, you know, mm -hmm. words and illustration. H have any of you guys uh, been uh, pleasantly surprised when an illustrator illustrated your book and it was much better than, than you had envisioned it to be? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. when I did this book on safe, warm and snug, I was so grateful to get Jose Arwego and Ariane Dewey because I mean, they just took my my poems and expanded it. It's like Jerry's books. Who would win? I mean, I the words are okay. Okay, the words are okay. <laughs> but the they're okay. They're okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's what's so great about these picture books because they're. Here's a book right here. Hold on, I, I got to show you this. This is a book called. I got this book recently called Giant Squid. It's not mine. It's by Candy Fleming and Eric Roman. Now the words are wonderful. But when you start looking at the pictures, they're just like, wow, it, it brings this creature, this, this mythical underwater creature to life. I mean, look, look at that eye. Yeah, yeah. So I think what you're saying is, yeah, I mean, you, you gotta have some ima imagination with these, uh, with your words, but you also have to leave the artist to interpret those words, you know? It, it's kind of like uh, Elton John and Bernie Taupin. Right. I mean, you've yeah. got the, well, that's exactly got the music right. and the lyrics. Yeah. yeah. Music and the lyrics. And they're hey. both they're both critical. Right. By the way, we're almost out of time. Steve, are you going to pick up your ukulele or are you going to pick up oh. your uh, banjo ukulele? Yeah. Well, the banjo ukulele, I'm going to show you if I could. Um, Jerry, Jerry was lovely to send me this. It's not in tune. So I'm going to play my regular ukulele, and this is our wind-up song. This is called uh, Bye Bye Kids, Don't Forget to Read, and uh, it's all of, um, you can sing along. Here we go. Say one, two, three, and I'll go. One, Before you go, two. Mike, did you have, <laughs> Mike, did you have anything else to say? Mike Shoulders. Mike Shoulders, did you have anything else to say? No, no. Uh, I, I, thanks for including me. I've, I've had a great time. So, uh, so see no, you in a week. We'll see what? you next Friday. Next Friday, we'll we'll pick a winner for the uh, T is for Titanic book. Fantastic. All right, Mike Cartel. Did you have anything to say? Uh, I think your hat says it all. Uh, your hat I, think the, it all. I think the hat says it all. It's a no. Is that a crop hat or is that a lobster? It it is a it's at. For the purposes of this, we're going to make it uh, a lobster, Jerry, since in your honor. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm deeply honored. All right, hit it. Hit it, Stevie. Go. Bye bye, kids. I hope you had a good time. Bye bye, kids. Don't forget to read. Bye bye, kids. I hope you have a good day. Don't forget to read. Thanks for inviting us to your screens. We had the best time. You guys are cool. I hope you really like our books. Read a book. You can't go wrong. I said bye-bye, kids. I hope you had a good day. Bye-bye, kids. Don't forget to read. Bye-bye, kids. I hope you have a good day. Don't forget to. Don't forget to. Don't forget to read. Yes.
Cha cha cha. There you go, Steve. Cha cha cha. Thank you, guys. Everybody, MichaelShoulders.com, Steven Swingberg Mike Cartel.com, Jerry Thank you, everybody, for.